Mohamed, thank you very much for that speech. To oppose the motion, I call Miss Jess Simons. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jessica Simons, and I'm representing the Children and Young People's Assembly for Wales, Funky Dragon, who are all set over here. Um, I am here today to oppose the motion of child poverty, which you may think is unjustifiable, as child poverty is undoubtedly a large issue in the UK. Fears to ask you, though, what is poverty? How are we meant to measure it without getting caught up in technology and luxuries such as iPads and phones and cars? We can look at countries such as Somalia, where the male life expectancy is 48 years old and only 32% of children are enrolled in primary education. Most people are lucky to reach their life expectancy, as a mortality rate in under fives is 180 per thousand per year. We can look back at the United Kingdom, our country, a country of prosperity that gives out hundreds of millions of pounds to countries such as Somalia that has a male life expectancy of 78 years. <coughs> Secondly, a report done by Funky Dragon, the Children and Young People's Assembly for Wales, called Our Rights, Our Story, in 2007, found out that 65% of people in Wales had never had their rights explained, leaving only 8% aware and the rest unaware. Although these statistics are only for Wales, the high numbers represent a missing link which can only be stretched across the United Kingdom. Looking at the United Nations Review on Children's Rights in the UK, they believe that the way young people are treated in the criminal justice system is more than an issue than poverty, showing that it is not our priority. Thirdly, child poverty forms the biggest circle of youth poverty, disadvantages in later life and high crime rates. For example, the burglary rate in Yorkshire is twice as high as that in the south of England, thus reflecting the high poverty rates in these areas leading to a life of crime. Looking at the National Low Pay Commission report on the national minimum wage written in April of this year, the Commission displays how young people are one of the hardest hit over the age of segregation of the national minimum wage. To quote, between 1999 and 2007, average earnings of young people rose roughly in line with those of adults, as did their minimum wages. Since then, it has become evident that the wages of young people have increased at a slower pace than those of adults. This leads to a lack of resources, lack of inspiration and essentially poverty. Finally, my point is this. The End Poverty Now Coalition is a mass of small and large charities from all over the UK that are trying to tackle this problem every single day. It is part of the Millennium Development Goals, two of which are relevant, improving child health and universal primary education. These goals were set to be achieved by 2010, and clearly these have not yet been met. The deadlines have been extended, and the context of these goals have not been reviewed. The world is changing, and so must these goals to incorporate what is important in the present day. We have global leaders, governments, and so many people pouring money into child poverty, and if they can't make a difference, how can we? So I urge you to think about what is realistic when you make your choices. What is achievable in the next 12 months? Think about what we can do to make a difference to young people all over the UK and make way for the next generation. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to call this gentleman here.